you doing? The art of video game adaptations have left many scratching their heads because there have been several instances where the movies or TV shows simply fail to impress the fans. Of late, however, there has been a noticeable change in this trend and we have been entertained by some solid adaptations. The much-awaited movie adaptation of Borderlands is finally in the theatres and in this video we will explore the movie and elaborate on the climactic twist. You will soon find out if the movie is worth your time, but there will be some major spoilers along along the way, so you have been warned. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. There's only one of you in the world, and you're special. What is the premise of Borderlands? The star of the narrative is Lilith, a popular vault hunter from the video game series, and she is played by the talented Kate Blanchett. Lilith happens to be a tough bounty hunter with an attitude, and she is offered a ridiculous amount of money for a particular mission by the powerful Atlas. It is almost synonymous to how Kate Blanchett must have received a life-changing amount for starring in this role that is well below her acting skills. Damn, we just couldn't help bashing the movie just a few minutes into the video, and that should tell you all about the quality of this disappointing project. Anyway, coming back to the story, the mission for Lilith is to retrieve the kidnapped daughter of Atlas, Tina, and the kidnapper is none other than another popular character from the game, Roland. He is a soldier who has reportedly gone rogue, and he has taken the girl to Pandora, along with a psycho named Krieg. Kevin Hart is not the best choice for Roland, but he still tries to make do. Imagine hiring the services of a fine comedian and not making him do the funny bits. Speaking of funny, the movie tries to compensate the lack of humour in Roland with a wise cracking robot named Claptrap. Lilith runs into this robot when she heads to Pandora, which also happens to be her birthplace that she hasn't visited in several years. Claptrap is somehow programmed to wait for her on Pandora and the robot also helps her track down Tina. However, here comes the major twist in the tale after Lilith discovers that Tina was never really kidnapped in the first place. Atlas actually held her captive against her will, and Roland actually rescued her. By this time, the private army of Atlas attacks them all, but Lilith teams up with Roland to kick their ass and sends a message. The war is on, and we already have a ragtag group somehow finding a way to work together. If this gives you strong Guardians of the Galaxy vibes, we really cannot blame you, because the resemblance is almost uncanny. Soon, more is revealed about Tina, who turns out to be an Iridian, which is an ancient race that inhabited Pandora. Because of her heritage, Tina is capable of opening the vault, which is a secret place that stores the powers and advanced technology of this lost civilization. Lilith and company also chance upon Tina's foster mother, Dr. Patricia Tannis, who helps them to find out the key that can open the vault. This leads them into the underground maze where a tribe of psychos lives, and they somehow manage to retrieve the key back to the surface. By now, Atlas has got wind of Lilith's change alliance, and the fact that she has broken their communication device is also a clear giveaway. He sends in a drone with his holographic projection and explains how he still wants the girl. In a rather silly miscommunication, Tina watches the last bit of this interaction and misinterprets Lilith's intentions. She believes that Lilith is still working for Atlas and uses a grenade to knock her unconscious. Of course, things are all setting up for a grand finale, where it is going to be a complete chaos as the intense show showdown is inevitable. Ending explained. Is the climax in the movie different from the game? One of the first things that you will notice while watching the movie is that Eli Roth has made considerable changes from the game canon and tried to create a separate canon for the movie. This not only reflects on the characters and the storyline, but can also be spotted during the climactic moments of the movie. After Lilith is knocked unconscious, the team leaves without her and the robot the next day. They even reach the vault, but it is a little too late and Atlas is already there to secure the findings for himself. He forces them to open it for him, but Tina fails to get the job done. In another surprising climactic twist, it is revealed that Lilith is also an Iridian and she ends up opening the vault successfully. Apparently, she can open the vault as well, and she is actually an Iridian deity called Firehawk. When Atlas threatens to kill Tina, if she doesn't obey his orders and opens the vault for him, she obliges, but only with a clever plan to leave Atlas trapped inside. A tentacled creature lives in the vault, and this creature 
is called the Destroyer for a good reason. We soon find out when it shows itself just as Lilith manages to free Tina and escape. Meanwhile, Atlas ends up getting dragged away by the creature and it is safe to assume that he wouldn't trouble anybody anytime soon. The game, however, handles the ending very differently and the creature that we get a glimpse of is the actual boss fight in the final moments. The Destroyer has a major role in the game and it is suggested that the creature can consume the entire universe if it is freed. The game ends with Commander Steel and her soldiers getting slaughtered by this creature and the player has to fight this super powerful entity for a final victory. Besides fighting the creature, the player also has to ensure that it doesn't escape from the vault. Every major change from the game that affects the movie. We just told you all about how the climax of the game has been tweaked majorly in the movie, and there are plenty of other changes that do not deliver the best results. For instance, the costumes worn by the characters are vastly different from the game, and the movie fails to come up with the genuine subtle humour that was an integral part of the game. Also, the fact that the movie is a PG-13 bloodless affair doesn't help the cause, because many of the action sequences feel below par for this reason. Only the central idea has been retained in the movie and we see the secret vault in Pandora which contains ancient technology and mysterious powers. Other small changes include the origin of Lilith because she is not from Pandora in the game and we also get a clearer picture of Tina in the game. Sweetheart, remember that heavy red rock I told you to hide in your dress? Pull the pin at the top, then throw it at the wall. Mommy? Just run! Tina! where her parents are dead and she is not just some magical clone. We believe that sticking to the original canon may have helped the movie big time. Just imagine an intense fight with a deadly creature to finish things off. Heck, we would have even brought you a fresh video on the anatomy of the Destroyer in that case. Did the movie miss a trick with Claptrap? Everything you need to know about this fun character? Those who are familiar with the Borderland universe will remember Claptrap fondly because this robot is easily one of the most iconic characters from the games. Minion, get on that cannon. Just blast this gate down, but don't do it until I'm out of the way. Understand? You might also be familiar with the typical voice of the robot, which was originally voiced by a former developer at Gearbox. Unfortunately, the movie changes the voice completely and the narrative fails to do justice to the character. Claptrap still has a fun screen presence, but Jack Black as the voiceover guy for the character just doesn't fit the bill. There are plenty of jokes written for Claptrap, but not all of them make you laugh. And it is almost painful at times to watch him move around like an annoying Star Wars droid. Claptrap in the game was a general purpose robot that was manufactured by Hyperion, a nefarious organization that was one of the chief weapon manufacturers on Pandora. They made this robot in a way that it had an over-enthusiastic personality and bragged frequently about things. The robot also suffered from loneliness quite a bit and was a bit of a coward. However, there was even a narrative where Claptrap underwent a radical shift in programming and was transformed into an interplanetary ninja assassin. There have been a lot of subtle changes made to this character, but it has largely remained a fun addition to the action RPG that has entertained gamers all over the world. What is the backstory of the creature destroyer in the game? As we have mentioned before, the destroyer is the final boss of Borderlands and the creature looks absolutely terrifying. It is an intergalactic being from another dimension and the purpose of locking the massive creature within the vault is to stop it from destroying the entire universe. The one-eyed beast has several tentacles and is extremely powerful and the destroyer is the reason behind the missing civilization of the Iridians. Most of them lost their lives while trying to imprison the creature. It is almost criminal that the movie fails to capture any of this rich lore and makes a useless cameo appearance of the creature to finish things off. Marvelous Verdict, a generic attempt that is clunky and a complete misfire. Now, let us get to the main bit, where we usually ask you to check out the movie for yourself or shower praises for a well-made effort. This time, however, we only have a word of caution for you, especially if you are a fan of the video game. It is disappointing to see a director of Eli Roth's caliber attempting such a generic sci-fi drama, but it is what it is. The project has been in production for quite a few years now, and the expectation 
expectations were high from this ambitious attempt. All we end up with are clunky special effects, a lacklustre script, and good actors not given the opportunity to shine. Kate Blanchett doesn't exactly impress with her strange American accent, and the likes of Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Hart don't have enough in the narrative to save the movie. Some critics have even called this a poor attempt to rip off the Guardians of the Galaxy format. Overall, we would suggest you look past this messy misadventure and plan your movie night for something else. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the movie and everything that is wrong with it. It is completely fine if you think differently and we would love to hear a different opinion as well. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.